Hello, thank you for joining me for home worship. I'm thinking this may be the last of its kind. Short explanation about that is that in the sanctuary on 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings when we have the gathering, we are going to start streaming that with cameras. And we have very high quality cameras and an operator for the cameras and a handshake between um, the computers. It's a very confusing, hard thing that we've done. We feel really <laughs> proud of ourselves for figuring it all out. And um, some people have been very generous to donate money so that we can a we're able to do this streaming. And what we're going to do is that you're going to have a live stream on at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And then the this recording of that streaming will be available to you on our website and on different uh, social media outlets, YouTube and Facebook. So we hope that you will avail yourself of home worship in a new way. Me recording my sermons in my house, today I'm in my kitchen. I thought we'd have more time together uh, with me pre-recording these messages and sending them out into the universe but I think we're, our time for this has come to an end. We're going to have that live stream so that you could feel like you're a part of the sanctuary worshiping happening together at 10 a.m. live or later on, it'll be available to you all week uh, and even in an archive if you want to go back through a, a recording of the live service. So today for Palm Sunday in 2022, it is April 10th. And the title of the sermon, I've titled it, Jerusalem. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke, where we'll look in the Common English Bible at the scripture for Palm Sunday. Luke 19, verses 29 through 46. As Jesus came to Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he gave two disciples a task. He said, go into the village over there. When you enter it, you will find tied up there a colt that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying it? Just say, its master needs it. Those who had been sent found it exactly as he had said. As they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? They replied, its master needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their clothes on the colt, and lifted Jesus onto it. As Jesus rode along, they spread their clothes on the road. As Jesus approached the road leading down from the Mount of Olives, the whole throng of his disciples began rejoicing. They praised God with a loud voice because of all the mighty things they had seen. They said, Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heavens. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, scold your disciples. Tell them to stop. He answered, I tell you, if they were silent, the stones would shout. As Jesus came to the city and observed it, he wept over it. He said, If only you knew on this day of all days the things that lead to peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. The time will come when your enemies will build fortifications around you, encircle you, and attack you from all sides. They will crush you completely, you and the people within you. They won't leave one stone on top of another within you because you didn't recognize the time of your gracious visitation from God. When Jesus entered the temple, he threw out those who were selling things there. He said to them, it is written, my house will be a house of prayer but you have made it a hideout for crooks. The key verses in this passage are when Jesus looked at the city and wept for the sadness of what was to come. The temple destruction in 70 CE was part due to a revolt that happened in 66 CE. For four years, they took back their city from a much larger oppressor. Then that oppressor came back to crush them. Jesus says, if only you knew on this day of all days, the things that lead to peace. If only. What was their crime? In what way did they go wrong? How were they not applying the things that led to peace? 
According to Jesus, they didn't recognize the time of their gracious visitation, God's presence through Jesus. We've looked in the past six weeks through the teachings of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount, sometimes called the Sermon on the Plain. Sermon on the Plain being an appropriate way to describe it, a play on words, if you will, because although he taught them so often in parables, he often uses plain language in the Sermon on the Mount or the Sermon on the Plain. Plain language to talk about the best way to live according to God's good intentions for humanity. The things that lead to peace. He said, blessed are the peacemakers in chapter five in Matthew. So here in Luke, he's lamenting that Jerusalem does not know the things that lead to peace. Someone has to start the things that lead to peace, maybe ending what leads to war. One side needs to respond in a different way to achieve peace out of retribution. Jesus taught about a third way, but our sense of justice and self-justification will not allow, oftentimes, for a third way. They organized a revolt. They had a good reason to. They held on for a few years, and then they were delivered a crushing blow. All because they did not know the things that lead to peace, and they did not recognize time of God's visitation. The power and the glory is not in the place where they thought it was. They did not do the most important thing. And I'm going to stop here saying they, because they is us. We are God's creatures. We are trying as they were back then in 66 and 70 CE, to relate to God. What we failed to do was what we failed to do in the wilderness after the Exodus. What we failed to do was what we failed to do when the Babylonians invaded. What we failed to do when God gave us chance after chance for redemption. And what did we do? We told God to keep God's redemption. And we put our trust in the things we know to be true. We trusted in our own ability to thwart the enemy rather than God's provision for us. This is the lesson we can learn from Jesus weeping as he gazes on this beautiful city, a breathtaking vista to look at Jerusalem from this mountain he's coming down from. He's looking at the city and he's weeping. And the lesson is this, isn't it true for your own life? If we trust God, we're okay. But when we try to do it ourselves, to do it our way, we fail. And God doesn't want that for us. God doesn't want that kind of strife for our lives. God, remember, is a loving parent and wants to give us good things, not a stone when we ask for bread, not a sneak when we ask for fish. We cannot relinquish control to God because we lack trust. And that's why Jesus is weeping, looking at this beautiful city that will be and stay destroyed. The Western Wall is what's left of the temple. Now, some scholars and archaeologists believe that it was constructed later than the destruction of 70 CE, but nonetheless, it is a symbol of Israel's pain and plight. For us, it is a symbol of our our failure as God's creatures to learn the ways of peace, our failure to recognize the visitation from God. And I wonder, as you gaze at this remnant, do you have a Western wall in your own life? 
a symbol of what once was and now is destroyed, left there like a scar to remind you that you didn't trust God when you should have. Jesus also says, on this day of all days, So what's going on on this day of all days as he's entering into Jerusalem on this donkey? They enter the city together. And at first, it's his disciples with him, the inner circle. They're the ones who were there. They're the ones that went and go collected the colt. The inner circle, Jesus' most beloved. These are the people who left everything behind to follow him. And as they get closer to the city, the crowds gathered. And he's mounted on the donkey so that he might ride into the city. I would imagine that the disciples are relatively pleased by this. Jesus hasn't made a parade of himself before this time. And indeed, he was continually telling people to keep quiet about the miracles, to keep his existence as a Messiah a secret. So this is a huge change of course. But you like it because it makes you feel important too. Right? If you're, the, if you're one of those disciples, and as the crowd gathers and they start to sing and shout, you look around and they're dropping their clothes in the road for the donkey to walk on. And there's so much celebration. Everyone looks on with a sense of triumph. If you can imagine yourself among the disciples, Judas is over there smiling. Peter is singing and dancing. The disciples are flanking Jesus' donkey. He's riding. He's leading the parade. And there's no hint of the days to come where one betrays and one denies and the rest abandon him out of fear or fatigue. Of course, there is this part where the Pharisees and the religious rulers want to keep This under wraps and control the narrative. But Jesus tells them, no, if they're silent, the rocks themselves will cry out. Well, those who want to keep this under wraps succeed eventually in convincing Judas and get Jesus arrested. That night in the garden could have gone so differently. The guards show up to arrest him And Peter, because he listened to Jesus all those times. In most Gospels, three times Jesus tells them, I will suffer and die and be raised again. But Peter, because he listened to Jesus and he believes that God can and will do amazing things through Jesus, Peter stands up. And instead of pulling out his sword and cutting off the ear of the servant, what if Peter reaches out his arm to hold back the others and says, No, let the guards take him. Remember, he told us that he would suffer and be killed, but then he would rise from the dead. Just relax, Peter says. It's going to be good. But that's not what happens. Peter does not know the things that lead to peace. If only you knew the things that lead to peace. They didn't back then. And we don't even today, do we? Thanks be to God that that's not the end of the story. There is redemption for all of us by the grace of God. Just like there was redemption for Peter who denied Jesus and for the other disciples that scattered to the winds. They might have messed up, but God still used them to spread God's message of radical love to the ends of the earth. The message is this. Even though Jesus weeps for us, even though we fail to understand the things that lead to peace, even though we may miss God's visitation, God's grace is available to us even so. This story, although it looks pretty grim (laughs) by Friday, it doesn't end in tragedy. It ends in victory. But more on that next week. May you have a blessed day. Palm Sunday.
Amen.